A very good morning from Ghana to all honorable ambassadors and dignitaries on this platform. I am Pastor Ambassador Alexander Obinboati from Ghana. And I'm happy to join the platform once again. Last month, it was so splendid. I did learn so much. And I know this particular one, I'm also going to learn a lot. I want to say a very big thank you and also being very much grateful and appreciative to my own mother, Professor Dr. Ambassador Queen Elizabeth Lucas. You are doing a wonderful job. We are praying for you that God should give you long life. We are praying for more strength for what you are doing and also more wisdom for what you are doing. I want to say hello to all friends and loved ones on the platform. I have to do this recording because tomorrow I'll be having to travel on the road and I'm not be able to join you whilst on the road because of network issues. So I decided to record this video and then send in my presentation. Then I will listen to the others after it has been sent on the YouTube channel. So thank you so much for this opportunity once again. And thank you for listening to me. God bless everyone. So this day, my presentation is actually on the theme abuse and violence, abuse and violence. But then I'll be taking uh, an excerpt from my book, a book that I launched last year in December, entitled Who is Knocking or Who is Knocking? I'm taking an excerpt from the book to talk about abuse and violence, not necessarily hitting on abuse and violence, but before abuse and violence happens, what are some of the things we are supposed to look out for? What are the signals to identify whether somebody could abuse you or have some kind of violence accuse you in the future? So I want to share the screen with us all, even as I do the presentation for, for today. All right, so. Okay, so I hope we all can see the screen. Okay, that's beautiful. Let me also get there and then make it a full screen for us all to benefit. All right. Okay, so the topic I'm discussing today is identifying the friendly enemy before abuse or violence. Okay, identifying a friendly enemy before abuse or violence. Okay. So as I said earlier on, this is an excerpt from my book, Who is Knocking? And actually from the chapter six of the book, you get to know what I'm talking about in this presentation. Now, um, in the chapter six of the book, the first thing you see is no face, no face. And what do I mean by no face? Because I'm a pastor, and this book is also about identifying the enemy behind whatever abuse or violence we, we, we face. I will quote more scriptures, and I hope you will follow me for some of these quotations that I, I bring out. So in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus said this, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. I will spew you out of my mouth. Now, I identify, or I actually define face as the identity of a person or a thing. So anything that you can identify means the thing has a face. So if the thing has no face, then it becomes very difficult to identify that particular thing. So identification is very important when you are dealing with people and also when you are dealing with security systems. And so if you cannot identify a person, then you don't even allow them in your system or you don't even allow them through the door. You don't deal with people that you cannot identify whom they really are, okay? So many people are walking around as without face. They are moving without an identity. And you understand uh, what I mean by without an identity as we move on through the presentation. They have hidden their true nature and character. That is what I mean. So anybody who hides his true nature and character can be termed as a person without a face. So the Bible calls them sheep with a wolf skin or lukewarm. When a sheep or when a wolf puts on a, a, a skin of a sheep, 
it becomes very difficult to identify whether it is a wolf or a sheep. That makes it a sheep or a wolf without a face. So a person without a face is neither cold or hot. So you need to be cold or you need to be hot. Without these things, it becomes very difficult for a person to identify you. But it's very difficult to know what kind of people they are, okay? They keep changing like a chameleon, all right? Such people are nice at face, yet very cruel at heart. So you meet them for the first time, they are very nice to you. They smile to you, they want to help you, they want to do something to, you know, um, for you to see how kind they are. But in their hearts, they don't mean what they do. So in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus said that, so then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. So I said that even if God, as mighty as he is, could not stand people without faith, or could not stand people who are neither cold nor hot, how much more we human beings? The question is, are we wiser than God to entertain people with uncertain faces? So if you are dealing with an individual, being it a friend, a brother, a sister, being it anyone, a stranger, and it is very difficult to know who the person is, whether the person is bad or the person is good. Sometimes he seems to be bad, sometimes he seems to be good. You are confused about the attitude, the character, the definition of the person. Then you better cast the person out. Don't deal with people that you cannot testify who they are. It's a very dangerous step to take. So before an abuse or, or violence, okay, these are some of the things that everyone should have to look at. Now, I want to talk to you about people that are the yes yes. People that are yes yes. Everything you say, they say yes. And if you ask them for money, they say yes. If you ask them for their time, they say yes. I mean, if you want them to do anything for you, they say yes. But the question is, are they also saying yes in their hearts? So on their mouth, they say yes. But in their hearts, do they also mean the yes that they have said? So a story of two lovers which ended in a hurt because she said yes on her lips, but did not mean what she has said on her lips in her heart. So it's not every yes that is a yes. You need to identify, you need to have a way of looking into the yes that people say. When people want to follow you to do something and they say yes, do they really mean yes? Sometimes it becomes difficult to drag them, it becomes difficult to have suggestions with them, to have meetings with them. It becomes difficult to, to come to a compromise with them. They, even though they say yes, but you don't see the yes in their actions. So how do you go about some of these things? So I say test people with fire to know if they really mean what they have said. You should know how you test people, all right? Sometimes you need to drag them on a high level. Sometimes you need to let them face the, the environment, the conditions of, of what they have said they will do to really find out if they will be committed to what they said they will do. All right, this is the test. Test them with fire. Let there be some kind of heat in what they have said they will do. And if they still remain yes to what I said they will do, then you can let them be rest assured that these people really want to help. This really, these people really want to be with you. They really want to support. Even in the hard times, they are there with you. So test people with fire to know if they are yes, is yes. Don't take for granted the little doubts in your mind about a person. All right, we have all instincts. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. All right, if people are around us and we feel like we feel some, some kind of doubts around them or about them, we should not take it for granted. Sometimes it might be true, sometimes it might not be true. But the moment those doubts can start coming into your mind, you need to find out. You don't need to accuse them because you are doubting them. But you need to set some standards, you need to set some fire to find out if the doubts that you are experiencing is really true about the people that you are moving with or the people that you are involving yourselves uh, with. So in a very short time, I want us to look at signals to identify the enemy or signals to identify somebody who could abuse you or somebody who could cause violence into uh, whatever you are doing with the person. Now, I want us to quickly look at what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. He said that, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. All right, so you see how he said, he said, no marvel, because even Satan, who is the devil himself, was able to transform himself into an angel of light. So this verse means that not all good people are really good, and not all bad people too are bad. So good people sometimes do bad things, and bad people also sometimes do good things. So how do I identify if somebody is bad or if somebody is good? Because Satan, as bad as he is, can do good things. 
all right, so-called good things. And it, is that, that, does that make him a good person? All right. And somebody can be very bad, but yet can do good. I always say that the people that rob us, the armed robbers, the killers, people that I mean, kill mass group of people, they have families. They have people that they love. They love their children. They love their wife. They love their parents. They love their, I mean, their family. They have people they love. So even though they are very bad in the student society, yes, there are some people that they love. They might have girlfriends or boyfriends. They might have people that are very close to them, that feed them, that, I mean, serve them, I mean, on daily basis or stuff like that. So they are bad people. Yeah, they are good to some people. So how do you identify who a bad person is or who a good person actually is? So there are some signals you're going to learn. And the first signals I want you to pick up is somebody who is too good. Too good, extra good. There's a saying that it is too good to be true. All right, so things that are too good mostly are not true. Too good, I mean, it's so juicy. It's so it, it presents itself as if there is no defect. I mean, it is so good to be true. And there are people who are too good to be good. So Jesus said in Mark 10, verse 18, why callest thou me good? There is not good but one, that is God. Anytime someone comes or becomes too good to you, it is a very good time to investigate, all right, the reasons for that particular goodness or the benevolence of that person. Find out why the person is so good to you and extra good to you. When you first fall in love, you want to sacrifice everything you have. But it doesn't mean that you are a man of sacrifice. All it means is that you want something and you want to use all that you have to get what you want. So Sacrificing all that you have for love doesn't make you somebody who is a sacrifice, a sacrificial person who sacrifices everything. So people fall in love because of the sacrifices that others do. And now that they have been in love for a very long time, they realize that these ones we are moving with are not whom they presented themselves to be. They were too good, but they are not that good as they said they were. All right. So anytime someone becomes that too good, find out what is the reason. Does the person need something from you? Does he want your attention? Does he want your love? Does he want sex? Does he want money? Does he want from promotion? Find out. Does he want to find out your secrets? What is the person looking for? Does he want to destroy me? That is why he's becoming too good to me. Don't be overtaken by their plenty acts of goodness and think that they like you. The enemy can present himself as an angel of goodness and steal away your joy steal away your, 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 your happiness, all right? So mostly, loved ones become sad. They, they enter into depression because the enemy has stolen away their happiness. The enemy has stolen away their joy. They came presenting themselves as good lovers. But in the end, it was something so worse and so bad. So whenever you are dealing with people who are too good, never take for granted what they can do when they get what they are looking for. Do not take for granted what they can do when they receive what they are looking for. The next thing I want to talk about is somebody who is always smiling, and I call it always smiling. So that is the next signal I look for. People who are always smiling. It is good to smile and even laugh. Doctors advise that people smile and laugh a lot to reduce high blood pressure, to reduce stress, to reduce depression, to reduce all, all these things. Mm. Because of this, the good attributes of smile or the good advantages of smile and then that the good smile can actually affect people and their joy their mood the enemy knows that a smile is very attractive and healthy so he uses smile as a strategy to get your heart the devil uses smiles to crush you all right so if smile can be used to get your heart that same smile can be used to crush you so you see people will smile to you getting your attention People will always be smiling. Even when you are going wrong, they'll be smiling. When you are insulting them, they'll be smiling. When you are hurting them, they'll be smiling. So you see, when you encounter someone who smiles at everything, including your weaknesses, including your, your strength, your, including your, your, what do you call it? Your advantages and your, your, your disadvantages, the person is smiling at everything. Then, we could be rest assured that we are in for a disaster. You should know that that everything is not well. As someone who smiles a lot at everything, 
Even when they are supposed to be angry at you, then they end up smiling. When you expect that, no, this thing I have done to this person, this person must be angry at me, the person will be smiling. Because he's smiling to get you and crush you. He's smiling to invite you. He's smiling to take your mind away from the anger and the kind of uh, evil perception or the kind of evil thing he's conceiving. All right? So such individuals are very crafty and difficult to deal with. Very, very difficult to deal with. And I pray that if you come again, if you come across someone who is very smiling and he smiles at both your weaknesses and in your strength, he smiles at your threats. It's, even when you are threatening the person, the person is smiling. I mean, it's a dangerous thing. All right. You can't meet an enemy and this enemy is smiling at you at every time. You should know that it's a signal for disaster. And these are some of the signals you should know. I'm not saying smiling is not good, but take this one as a signal to identify when there's going to be an abuse or violence. Now, the next signal we're going to look at is silence. Every leader will one or one way or the other come across people who are always not talking at meetings or conversations. All right, such people will always say, for me, anything goes, right? Yes, they have their own option. They have got their own decision in their own hearts. And they are not ready to share what they are thinking of. They're not ready to share what they are deciding. They have just decided to keep quiet because their thinking is evil, because they are not ready to share what they are thinking. Even though they have options, they will tell you I'm okay. They will tell you I'm fine. They will tell you everything is okay. It, they will tell you let's move on. We are, we are fine. But it is time to avoid people who fail to express their suggestions, all right? They fail to express their suggestions. They fail to express their thoughts in an open discussion, yet are so loud in their closets. You will find this particular person talking and laughing and all loud, very loud, when he's alone or when he's with, with other people that he's comfortable with. But when it comes to meeting, the person is so quiet and doesn't talk. And he, at the end of the day, he will also be lamenting on issues that fail, that he failed to speak on. When it, it does not go well, he will go some, somewhere else and accuse the whole assembly of the things that we have all decided on because he didn't talk. And he has an evil motive. Now I've come out, I've come to know that no one can be referred to as so-called quiet or doesn't talk. Somebody who says I'm a quiet person and I do not talk. Everyone likes to be heard, but some people love to be heard from their actions rather than their words. So there are people who will not actually speak to you, but their actions will talk to you. So if you have friends or followers who do not talk at all or they don't express themselves openly then you should know that all is not well. The enemy is at work. At least they should express some actions. At least they should express some kind of language to you. They, should, they cannot be silent at every time. They cannot say they don't talk. No human being on the earth is so silent, except the one who is planning evil. And so find out that silence is one of the signals to identify whom an enemy or who somebody, or how somebody can cause you an abuse or violence. Now, the next thing I want us to see is absence or absence. Others also refer to the absence. Uh, others also prefer to be absent at the very meetings that they themselves have arranged. You will sit down there with them, you make calls, you do the letter sharing, you do the email sharing and all that. They will even propose the time for the meeting. And when it's time for meeting, you don't find them. I mean, it's not once, it's not twice, it is their habit. It is because they don't want to be with you. It is because they are not ready to serve you. But it is difficult for them to see. So they do that in their actions by being absent. So that whatever happens, they were not in there to also witness it. So if you find out somebody who is always absent with a lot of excuses, always absent, always finding means and ways to be absent, then you should know that it's a signal of people who do not want to be with you or people who could create violence or abuse you or even accuse you in the future. They will not attend, some of them will not even give excuse at all. You will just will not find them there. You call them, their phones are off. You try to visit, they are not in the house. They will not even come and say sorry about anything. They don't see anything wrong with what they have done. So such people can be used by the enemy to frustrate your God-given assignment. And if you are very passionate about something and you come across a team who, who are, I mean, with this kind of attitudes, it's very, very frustrating to move on. 
And I have learned to avoid people like that. In fact, they make their heart sick. The Bible says that hope that is deferred make their heart sick. If you are always trusting and hoping that somebody will help you and they do not appear, they do not suffice in any way, it makes their heart very, very sick. So do not wait for absent people, number one. Never wait for absent people. Just carry on with what you have decided to do, whether they are around or they are not around. And then number two, they are agents of delays and setbacks. Absent people, always absent people are agents who delay progress. And they also bring us back. They don't want us to make any progress. I'm afraid they are not meant to be there. That is why they are not there. So when people are becoming absent several at your meetings, absent with you when you are in meetings, they don't turn out, know that God is taking them away from you. Don't force yourself to be with people who do not want to be with you. When you do that, you'll be frustrating your future. And when you do that, you will create problems for yourself. Never force anyone to love you. Never force anyone to be loyal with you. All you can do is to teach them. All you can do is to be there for them, to love them. But if they are not turning back to you the way you expect it, do not be disappointed and never force them. God will bring the good ones your way. Lastly, just move on with a few faithful ones. Just move on with a few faithful ones. The few faithful ones are more powerful than the many, many, many disloyal ones. You can have a great team of army or a great army. If they are not faithful, you have no army. But you can also have few servants. If these few servants are very faithful, then you have got a great army. Hello. All right, so the next thing I want us to look at is people who are always changing the time. Full of disappointments. They are always changing times. And, you know, we all change time, right? When we think that the time that we have a portion will not be conducive for all of us, then we decide to change time. But there are people who are of the happiest of changing time. They are always full of disappointments. And when they come, they want to leave early. When they come, they come late, they want to leave early. They want to set different time for the meetings. They wouldn't come early. They frustrate. They are full of disappointment. So when you encounter people who are not faithful in their dealings with you, then remember that the enemies are to work with you. These kind of people make good plans with you and, and the point of, at the point of execution, they are nowhere to be found. They will sit in your office with you, they will sit in the house with you, with your computer, they will bring all the knowledge they have, their wisdom, they will just build up ideas with you. When it's time for execution, they leave you alone. They are not there. They are not there, nowhere to be found. They are nowhere to be found. Making plenty of flimsy excuses. They cannot work. They are just... Say yes, they don't work, all right? So a faithful and a true person with an identifiable face will always remain loyal to your plans and execution. Most times we find ourselves planning with the wrong people, but because they are also making I mean, the needed contributions, we are unable to identify them as enemies because when they come for meetings, these people will help us to make meaningful suggestions meaningful contributions, but time for implementation, they are not there. So we are not able to identify them as enemies of progress, all right? So we thank God we know how to identify them, even though they pretend to be with us. So talking too much about others. So I said earlier on, if you encounter people that talk too much about others, then you yourself, you are seriously in trouble. If you encounter anyone who is a lover of gossip and talks too much about others, then remember that you are chatting with an enemy. Very soon, this same person will be discussing you with others. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, it says that you, so, you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands. So we command you, avoid people who talk about others with ill motives. Avoid people who talk about others with ill motives. They are not good people to, I mean, mingle with. Now, the next signal I want us to look at is always giving excuses. Always giving excuses. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, it says that for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. For where your treasure is, there also your heart will be. And then let's look at this one. 
People give frequent excuses when they are not ready to offer any commitments or sacrifices. So they give all kinds of excuses when they are not ready to offer any form of um, commitments or any form of sacrifices. But the question here is that, um, would you have given this excuse if your gold was used as a foundation for this project? Ask them. Even though you are giving excuses and these excuses are very genuine, we are asking that, would you have actually given this excuse when your money, when your gold was used as a, as a foundation of this project we are, we, are, we, are, we, are having, we are having? So there can always be a thousand and one excuses not to do something, but at the same time, others are able to make priceless sacrifices to overshadow any kind of genuine excuses which could have or which they could have given. I know there are excuses, but the other people who can also try to avoid these excuses. So if you will be able to move on despite this excuse, then why wouldn't you do that? Why would we want to avoid the excuses when you know very well that, no, we can still move on and do something? So creative people create, I mean, excuses where they shouldn't create excuses. You should look at them as enemies of progress and people who can actually abuse and also create violence in situations. Now, the conclusion for my presentation today is